Well hello there, and welcome back to the channel. I'm technically not a technician, and in today's video, we'll see if we can take a few scavenged parts and a cheap broken Terminator cab I picked up for one hell of a deal, and we'll see if we're able to bring this cab back to life. I don't mind telling you, I've been looking forward to this project for a whole minute. However, I do have to get this legal mumbo jumbo out of the way first, and with that said, this video is for educational purposes only and is only intended to show you what I've done and what my results are. If you choose to modify your systems using this or any other information I've provided from any video or content I've created, you do so at your own risk. I, this channel, or any person connected to this video will not be held liable for any choices you make with your hardware or software. Modify at your own risk. I feel as if I should give you some background on this cab. However, some of you who follow the channel closely may already know. A few weeks ago, I got a notification from Facebook Market that an arcade cab had come up for sale, and not only was it for sale, but it was a T2 cab. I had an interest in this cab as I had heard that Team Encoder had a member working on a soft mod for that cab, and I do enjoy a good mod. So I decided to take a look at the ad. What stood out to me is that this ad was from an electronics store. Instead of reaching out via the ad, I thought to myself that I'd like to see this store in person. I have to admit, I'm glad that I did. The two cabs I left with were the T2 cab and a Ridge Racer. When making this deal, I figured I'd be placing a PC in both of these units. However, after showing off my score to a few friends, one of my buddies informed me that he had the PCB boards and quite a few other needed parts for both of these cabs from leftover mods he had done, and he was willing to meet me and give them to me for free. After thanking the good lord for all of my good luck, a few orders off of Amazon, and making arrangements with my friend, a few short weeks later I had all the parts one needed. By the way, Mark, if you're watching, thank you. This video would not be possible without your support. I'd also like to say that Mark runs the Facebook group Officially Unofficial at Games 4K group. This group was started as a safe place to speak about at games products without retaliation. If you'd like to check it out, please feel free to join. You'll find a link in the description. Again Mark, thank you. For those of you who are curious, Mark gave me two guns, a PCB board, a monitor, cabling, and the control deck's PCB board. All I was left to do was source a power supply and one of those crazy looking square ended USB cables. Like many other men in YouTube land, I do not throw away perfectly good cables, and I happened to have the funny looking square ended USB cable from some old printer I had trashed years ago. I also never throw away a good power supply, but sadly, I was unable to match the proper voltage, amperage, and connection. However, I was able to find what I needed on Amazon, and it was only $10. I'll also be placing a link in the description for anyone who may need a replacement power supply. The link is an affiliate link. If used, it will support the channel, and it will not cost you anything extra at all. Basically, the goal or scope of work for this project will consist of disassembling this cab, removing all of the damaged electronics, and then adding the new electronics that we've sourced from Mark and Amazon back to the cab. We'll see if we can turn this non-working stock cab back into a working stock cab. Regardless of today's outcome, it should be fun and entertaining. Well at least for me it'll be fun and entertaining. You poor bastards only get to watch. I am sorry you don't get to join me in my fun, but at least, with the power of YouTube, you get to watch. Right about here is where we're starting to need cabling to make all the connections to each of the electronics that are needed to play the game, and we've just now seen that we need that funny USB printer cable. Good thing I know where a shit ton of cabling is. After about 5 minutes of looking through a few boxes, I've got my USB cable, and we can now continue. Happy happy joy joy. For those of you that are unaware, James Cameron, a visionary director, brought about a sea change in the film industry with the release of Terminator 2, Judgment Day in 1991. The audience was mesmerized by the thrilling action sequences and groundbreaking visual effects, and arcade enthusiasts clamored for a video game adaptation of the film. With anticipation, Midway developed the arcade game T2 at the same time that the film was being produced and released. The video game featured Arnold Schwarzenegger, Robert Patrick, and Eddie Furlong reenacting their respective roles in digitized footage. The game featured sleek light guns that allowed one or two players to play the roles of T-800 cyborgs. The game was a huge success in 1991, and now, 30 years later, 
Arcade 1UP is thrilled to be able to produce this title in the form factor of a home arcade. Those who are fans of Arcade 1UP will finally be able to get their hands on one of the most requested games ever with T2. The only issue with this cab is that it only has one game. However, that can be changed, but that's a subject for a different video. Be sure to subscribe to see when that video gets dropped and to see how it's done and what my outcome will be. We now have all of the electronic components replaced and back in place, and we've got all of our cabling connected to all the areas they should be. I will need to build my riser, but before we do, let's test this unit and see if it's now working. After powering the unit on and giving it a short test, we can see that everything seems to be in working order again. We did it, and now we can move to the riser. However, before we do, I will need to finish adding in the other hardware. As previously discussed, this cab is kind of a Frankenstein unit, and it did not come with all of the screws and wooden dowels needed to hold everything in place. The good news is, I've been saving all of my extra parts from other builds, and because I'm an arcade hoarder, I had most of the needed securing hardware to meet the needs of this project. I do love it when a plan comes together, I also forgot to add the screws to the monitor, and I feel like those are important, so we'll be adding them as well. I'm glad I saw them on the counter next to the unit, or I would have completely forgotten about them, and my monitor wouldn't have been secured properly. That could have been bad when moving the cab, but luckily that will not be an issue. Also I'm sure that many of you have noticed that I'm using a screw gun. The directions say not to use one, but I was a tech and installer for years, I'm kind of lazy, and this old screw gun is nothing more than an appendage. When I picked this cab up from the proprietor at Falcon Electronics, the riser was not put together for this cab but instead was in a large pile on the floor, and the little bit of securing hardware that came with the unit was inside a small Dixie cup. So before we start, we'll verify what parts we have, and we'll look through the extras that I've hoarded over the years for the items we lack. With luck, we'll find what we need. After looking at the owner's manual and verifying that I do have all of the riser panels, I'll be doing the same with the securing hardware. I know I am lacking some of those items. However, between the hardware that the unit did have and the hardware I've been hoarding, I should have everything we need to build our riser and set our cab up high so that it plays and feels right. At this point I feel like things are really shaping up for this repair. All of the hardware that I keep from my past builds that I've hoarded, I keep in my old ITT Technical Institute toolbox. I've had that old toolbox since I was about 19 or 20 years old. I thought about using it when I was a technician, but for the most part, it's never really left the house. I really did enjoy going to that school, and I learned a lot about electronics. I'm sad that I never finished, and I really dislike how ITT ended. I'm not sure Cont Roversy is ever a great way to end, but it is a good way to be remembered. The really sad part is that I had some great teachers at that school, and the people at the top ruined it for the teachers and the students at the bottom. At times, life can be a little like a strange train wreck that you can't seem to avoid, and the ending of ITT seemed to be in the middle of a nasty mess. I've got to admit, I'm curious. Did any of you go to ITT? If so, please let me know in the comments. It looks as if we sort of have everything that we need, so let's get this riser built and placed under our cab. If you're curious as to what I mean by sort of having everything that we need, well, I don't have all of the right hardware. I do have a few screws that we'll be using as a substitute, and I'm sure they will work fine. I guess you can say that's what I get for looking for a deal. Also, and yes, this is a side note, but kind of a fun fact, I've never paid full price for a cab. The T2 cab and the Ridge Racer are the only two that I got that I knew were not going to be working right out of the box. Well, proverbial box, as these didn't come in a box at all, but more of a pile of parts. Not that I'm complaining, if you want a great deal, you've kind of got to work for it and even make a few concessions. Both of the cabs I picked up from Falcon Electronics are in okay shape, but the PCB boards were not the only thing that took damage. The artwork on both of these cabs kind of stinks, as they both have a ton of scratches. With the Ridge Racer taking the lead with the most damaged artwork, I'm not very good at finishing work, and at least in my mind, I've always struggled with art. My mother's side of the family excels at creative works, as do my brother and my daughter. I, on the other hand, require a computer and some heavy image editing programs just to make a stick figure. As you can see, we're going to take a short break as I got an important phone call, and the gentleman on the phone is a long-time friend and one of the smartest people I've ever met. His name is Alex. We both work together, and sometimes I am in total awe of his brilliance. 
He is one of the very few people that I know of who is able to totally change your perception of a situation. There have been times that I've been stuck on an issue, then spoken with him, only to have him lead me to the answer. Alex, thank you for being my friend, and thank you for all that you've taught me. None of that needed to be in this video, but I figured since he kind of remoted into this video, I should help him make his YouTube debut on my channel, and of course I wanted to thank him for being a positive light in my life. Next time we're at work together, we should hug. Okay, off the phone, and back to work. We're almost done with the riser, and once done, we can place it under the cab. Oh, and I almost forgot. Major shout out to my sister Erin. I don't know if you can tell, but she got me this shirt. I also may have gotten her a similar shirt, and yes, she and I do play favorites. Speaking of favorites, another one of my favorite people, Chris, my son, has come in to check out the build. Chris kicks butt and is always very helpful. In fact, he helped take all of the photos used in the intro to this video. We were trying some green screen stuff as well, but I was unable to get the lighting right, so we just moved on. Young Chris was also going to help me with some gameplay, but I didn't hit record when we did, so all of that video was sadly lost, and yes, I cried. Just kidding, I simply reshot the video myself. Regardless, this was a fun project that I greatly enjoyed, and I now have a very cool T2 arcade cap. Who wouldn't be happy with that? A few future mods and videos I'd like to do would be the recessed monitor mod that I've seen so much about and the cabling hack to hide the cabling from each of the guns. However, the significant one is the soft mod that Team Encode is misdirection released. That mod will be a blast, and I can't wait to give it a try. If you'd like to give misdirection your support, he does have a Patreon setup, and you can get the newest version of his soft mod from the link in his Patreon. I totally recommend supporting his work, and I'll be sure to leave a link in the description. Be sure to check it out. If you're still here at the very end, I'd like to thank you for checking out this video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it informative. If you did, or even if you didn't, I'd like to ask that you like this video, leave me a comment, and maybe even share this video with a friend or on your social media. If you've not done so, please consider subscribing to the channel. All of these are small clicks of the mouse for you, but to this small channel, those small clicks mean the world, and they help this little channel beat the YouTube algorithm. Thank you.